I want to conclude this look at solubility by talking about vapor pressure. Remember, vapor pressure is the pressure of the gas that has evaporated from a liquid. So if you were to take the pressure of the water molecules over the surface of a glass of water, you could measure the vapor pressure of water. I want to focus specifically at the vapor pressure of solutions. How adding a solute will affect the vapor pressure of a solvent. Now hopefully it makes sense that if you put an ionic solute in a polar liquid, for example, if you put salt in water, you would expect the vapor pressure to go down. We know that the ions in salt would be attracted to the water molecules. That's why it dissolves. And if the water molecules are attracted so heavily to the ions, they are less likely to evaporate and turn into a gas. So by decreasing the rate of evaporation, you would decrease the vapor pressure. Now that's not only true for ionic solutes. That would be true for any solute. Even if it's not ionic, there would still be intermolecular forces that would attract a solute to a solvent. So generally, when you put a solute into a solvent, you lower the vapor pressure of that solvent. The exception to this is if you have a volatile solute. Now volatile simply means something that evaporates very quickly, something that has a high vapor pressure. So things like alcohols and acetone, those liquids evaporate very rapidly, so they have a high vapor pressure. Now it turns out that these volatile solutes are often very flammable and can even be explosive. That's why the word volatile has taken on a more common definition. But in chemistry, the word volatile simply means a liquid that has a high vapor pressure. This would be a non-ideal situation. Generally, we speak of dissolving non-volatile solutes and solvents. But in a non-ideal situation, you would have a volatile solute and a solvent. In a non-ideal situation, you actually increase the vapor pressure of the solvent. Because the solute has such a high vapor pressure, as it evaporates, it will bring solvent with it, making it easier for the solvent to evaporate. So normally, in an ideal situation, adding a solute lowers the vapor pressure of a solvent, but in a non-ideal situation where you have a volatile solute, you will actually increase the vapor pressure of a solvent. Let's focus on the ideal situation. We are gonna follow Raoult's law now, Raoult relates the vapor pressure of a solvent to the concentration of the solvent. And he says that the vapor pressure of the solution is proportional to the vapor pressure of the solvent and its concentration. And to find that concentration, we're using mole fraction. So Raoult's law says that the vapor pressure of the total solution will equal the mole fraction of the solvent times the pressure of the pure solvent. That's what that P-naught solvent means. Let's give it a try. So we're going to start with a non-volatile, non-electrolytic compound. We're talking about an ideal situation, and non-electrolytic meaning that we're talking about a molecular or a covalent compound. We know the molar mass of the compound is 97.8 grams per mole. I'm going to drop the vapor pressure of water from 42.362 torr to 23.756 torr. And I want to know what mass of that solute do I need to put into 250 grams of water in order to produce that change. We can rewrite Raoult's law and find the mole fraction of the solvent right off the bat. I can say the pressure of the total solution over the pressure of the pure solvent will equal my mole fraction. And so we know that the total solution is 23.756 torr. And we know that pure water at this temperature is 42.362 torr. So that's giving me a mole fraction of my solvent of, I'll say 0 0.56078. Looks like I've got five sig figs in all my data, so let's go with that. 0 0.785, so 9. That's my mole fraction. The mole fraction of the solvent 0 0.56079 is going to equal the moles of my solvent divided by the moles of my solvent plus the moles of my solute. Well, I know how many moles of solvent I have. I know I have 250 grams of water. So 250 divided by the molar mass of water gives me 13.87 moles of water. So this is going to equal 13.87 moles divided by 13.87 moles plus the moles of my solute. So I can just solve now for the moles of my solute. 
zero point five six zero oh seven nine equals thirteen point eight seven divided by thirteen point eight seven plus x. When you solve for x, you get ten point eight six moles. Now the question wasn't asking for how many moles of solute. The question was asking for the mass of solute, but we know that the molar mass is 97.8 grams per mole. So we can take our 10.86 and multiply it by the molar mass. 10.86 moles times 97.8 grams for every one mole, and I get 1,062 grams of solute. So that's a lot of solute. I have to put a kilogram of solute into 250 milliliters of water in order to get this change in vapor pressure. But that's how to work with Raoult's law.